Hello, everyone, and welcome to Welcome to Teaching Books. My name is Jade Valenzuela, your host for today. And today I will be giving you an overview of teaching books. So whether you are brand new to exploring it or you want a refresher, today we are going to be looking at many of the different types of resources and tools you can expect to find on teaching books and then use them anytime in any learning environment. Teaching Books was funded, founded to connect readers to authors and illustrators and to provide professionally vetted resources for books that you're using in classrooms, libraries, and beyond. In 2021, we joined Overdrive, an ebook company. So now we have the possibility to connect books and resources together. So either through Sora for schools or Liber Libby for public libraries, uh, they have the books and Teaching Books has the resources. If you want more information on that, just reach out anytime. What we're gonna look at today, I'll be showing you different ways to search and explore resources for titles that you're using. I'll also show you how to discover new titles that you could use and share. And stick around for the second half when I will be showing you some tools such as creating lists and finding uh, time-saving activities, our new early childhood resources, and more that can support your work. I'll also post the certificate of attendance near the end of the webinar. So the first thing is head over to teaching books at school.teachingbooks.net. We do also have a public library interface, which you can uh, access from the toggle menu here. However, today I will be staying on the school platform. So here I am, school.teachingbooks.net. And the first thing I wanna do is sign in. We always recommend to sign in as an educator or a professional on the library version in order to take full advantage of uh, all the resources, have access to all the features and tools such as our book resumes, our early childhood printables, list making, and much more. So you can see once I've signed in, it says welcome and my name up at the top. So now let's jump in to how to find resources. Teaching books is a great place to come when you have a specific book in mind. Maybe there's a book you're teaching, a book you're considering, a book that you're thinking about purchasing or putting on a display or reading aloud. Come here to teaching books to see what we have for it. Maybe you're teaching a book for the first time, or maybe you have taught a book for decades and are looking for fresh ideas. We can help you all around. So I'm just going to type in a title. This is one that my daughter, my, my kindergartner has been obsessed with this series lately. So I wanted to share it today. I just typed in the title in the search bar right up at the top. And here's your standard resource page. So every title in our collection will have this same format. Up at the top, you've got your basic information, series, author, your description. You see right here how many resources we have for a title. Titles can have more or uh, fewer resources. It varies title by title, but all of the resources are handpicked by our content team. You see information about the book up here, and you see some highlighted out of those 17 resources, some that we just put up at the top to make sure you don't miss. So one that I wanna start with is just um, our video book trailers. They're one of our more popular resources. They're a great way to promote books, get students excited about reading. We're not gonna watch the whole thing, but to give you a little taste, here we go. This is a cookie, a smart cookie. Uh -huh. But she didn't always think of herself that way. In school, she didn't get the best grades. Hmm. She was the last to finish her tests. And one time, she misspelled the word dough. That was rough. But then something happened that changed everything. Uh -huh. From the creators of the Food Group series. Come so I'll pause it there. But just to give you a little taste, uh, book trailers can be a great way to um, just build that excitement for reading. And as with everything on teaching books, see so you're going to see today, this little share arrow, everything is shareable. And uh, with this share tool, you'll have lots of ways to uh, get resources into the hands of your readers. A couple of things about book trailers. Most of them are here on teaching books. We don't have to leave somewhere else. And the other thing, my favorite thing is there are no commercials for the ones that are on teaching books. So a uh, great benefit with that as well. Let's go back to our resource page here. A couple other things I wanna point out on this particular book. Over here on the left, you'll see some of our games. So we have our book cover jigsaw puzzles, which are really fun. They go up to 64 pieces. So even for older students, they can be a challenge. They're interactive. They work great on a computer or a touch screen, interactive whiteboard. 
and they're shareable as well with your share arrow right here. You also have a word search builder right here. Other things I wanna point out that we have here, you'll see we have an audio excerpt, we have a video book reading. So for some titles, mostly picture books and classics, we will have complete readings of a text. It's a great way to expand your offerings to share books <laughs> with, <laughs> with like I had a or million, even to, even to share and send home to families. So you can see this is the whole book being read aloud on video. The other section I always like to point out, as we scroll down here, is book guides, activities, and lessons. This is a great place to come for um, our customizable multi-level lessons. You'll see an example of that here. Uh, here's a literacy, literacy kit. Sometimes you'll find these fun activity guides, which are printable and ready to use. Lots of fun. And other things like discussion guides, or book club kits, all sorts of things you can find in that section. Let's go ahead and search for um, an older, a title for older readers this time. So I can show you a couple other resources that you might find. So here again, same resource page format that we saw before. Here we have 46 resources. One of the resources Teaching Books is known for is our Meet the Author recordings. These, the authors record just for us. You can't find them anywhere else but on Teaching Books. And it's the author in their own voice talking about their book, providing insight into maybe what inspired it or their process and all sorts of other things. Let's take a quick listen to a part of this one. The idea came from a dream which is funny, I have post-it notes all over my office walls, and I did have a post-it note that said weird short story collection. And then I woke up from a dream, and I don't dream as much as I used to, but I woke up from this dream where in the dream, basically I was there thinking I should write a collection of stories about collectors. Uh, and so I walked around with it for about an hour and I realized, no, no, this wasn't for me. Like, I trust my gut a lot. I am a surrealist. So I, I just sort of listened to the ether and it told me, no, no, this was other people. And then. So I'll pause it there. You can always come back and listen to the rest on your own. And again, this is an, a resource that's shareable. Here's your share arrow once again. Another resource that you'll find on teaching books, one another one that we're known for is our name pronunciations. Hello, my name is A.S. King, which most people notice when they look at it, spells asking. And a lot of people ask me if I did this on purpose, um, and I kind of did. It just seems to suit me because I'm always asking all sorts of questions, and I always have been. So these are uh, great because you get to not only hear how the author pronounces their name so that we all can pr pronounce it correctly, but we can also gain insight from them about their names, where it came from, uh, maybe there's a background story or a uh, cultural meaning or all sorts of interesting things you can learn about them. And you can share these and build those connections with your students to authors and illustrators. Again, just like all of our other resources, there's your share arrow again. And this time, let's take a look at that. Anytime you're on a resource, you'll see that share arrow. It opens up this little sharing box here, and you have several options. The good thing about all of these options here in the sharing tool is that the person on the other side of receiving your the, the sharing is going to have immediate, seamless access to whatever resource you choose to share. You have the link, of course, right here that you can copy and paste anywhere that you'd like. You have some digital options down here at the bottom. You do have the option to set sharing rules right here on this little line. You can click the toggle here to make it uh, a focused sharing, we like to call it. You can also share with QR code printables. So maybe you want to make a bookmark. With the click of a button, you can have a bookmark for whatever resource you choose to share. Maybe it's a book reading. Maybe it's a meet the author recording. This one is an audio name pronunciation. It says it right there. You've got your code, your link, and you can print it out and share. You also have a flyer option, a label sheet. Maybe you want to actually put physical labels on your physical books. You can do so. 
And lastly, uh, my favorite are our shelf talkers. As the name suggests, they were meant to designed originally to be on a shelf. You can see a little fold here. They're more visual. You have QR code. You also have your institution's branding on the shelf talkers right here. And I'll show you some examples of what they can look like in your physical spaces. Here's an example of the bookmarks that we looked at earlier. There's that shelf talker. And here's what you could use them for. Maybe you're in a library and you do displays. You can put them to promote your books. You can put uh, shelf talkers that link to the author name pronunciation or the author page under books by that author. You can make your own designs. You can take our QR code, copy and paste it into your own slides like I did here. You could turn this into a poster. You could cut our shelf talkers out and use them as on your bulletin boards or on um, activity stations in your classrooms. Possibilities are endless and they're all there for you to easily connect to back to teaching books resources. All right, so last couple of things I wanna show you on this resource page. Again, if we scroll down, you have your book guides, activities and lessons section. I always just like to, to point that out because you'll always find interesting things there. Uh, sometimes we have vocabulary lists that will be down towards the bottom. Oh, and I almost forgot. One of our brand new features that we're very excited about up is always up at the top on the resource page. It's our book resumes. So whenever you are thinking about a book, uh, you're considering purchasing it or using it, or you want to learn more about a book, you have these book resumes here, which are instantly generated reports that feature professional information. So you have your suggested age ranges right here. You have subject information. My favorite is the professional reviews where I can learn uh, from book lists, school library journal, et cetera, and see what they, um, what they note about a title. You also can scroll down and see award information, state lists, you can get a primary source statement, which is our meet the author recording about the book. And you can even see a book preview. We scroll back up to the top. You also have your previews on the left here. You can share this page. You can also print a report. And again, those are always up at the top. This is one of those features that you do have to be signed in as an educator for. So keep that in mind. If you are not signed in, you will not be able to see the book resumes. All right, so other ways that you can use teaching books. Maybe you don't have a specific title in mind. Maybe you want to find some new titles. Uh, we can definitely help you out with that, whether you're looking for award-winning, diverse titles, books in a certain genre or specific topic, our search bar right here is going to be a huge help. You can always browse by typing. So anything you want to type, you can type in an award name if you want. Uh, I'm going to type in, let's do nonfiction. You can do a genre, subject, keyword. One thing I always like to show is this little tip of not hitting enter. So I typed in my word and I didn't hit enter and I can see everything horizontally across the screen. If you do hit enter, it's a very different experience, but you can still find all the same resources. But personal preference that I like to share, there you go, not hitting enter. I see books over here on the left. I see our entire nonfiction collection for me to explore over here on the right. But what I love about this version as well is I can see our lists and awards. So in addition to titles, Teaching Books also collects lists. So these are curated lists from organizations like the uh, Cooperative Children's Book Center, School Library Journal, that kind of thing. So I can come here to find um, inspiration. I can also explore awards. So anytime there's an award related to what I'm searching up at the top, it'll appear here and I can explore them. You can also see all the nonfiction and then use your filters over here on the left. So filter by grade level, curricular area. Our new phonics and phonological awareness filters are great if you're looking for books that feature these specific elements or things like alliteration and rhyme. Genre, cultural experience if you're looking for a specific diverse perspective, award, year, format, and resource type and then you can continue to browse. You can also um, 
browse through this big button up here, the big browse button up at the top, and see all collections. You'll notice that these categories are the same as the filters we were just looking at on the previous page. So you can jump into any of these. There's our phonics ones at the bottom. So let's say I'm looking for a specific resource type. Let's do reader's theater scripts. Now I want to show you one of our special tools that you have with that educator login, and that's the ability to make custom lists. So anytime you're browsing or you're on a title, you'll see this little plus sign. This is your tool to create a new list. You can see I have some lists already. You can make lists for your own planning. You can make lists to share, whatever you want. I'm gonna just call this Reader's Theater and add to my list. You can continue to browse and add one by one. You can add multiple. I'll add all of them. And now I have a list. All the lists that you create, you will find over here on the upper left, the top, the toggle menu, the three line toggle menu right here, your reading lists. And scroll down and here is that list I just made as well as all the other lists that I've had. You can also come here to create a list from scratch. So this big red button right here, you can just type in, you have to save, name it and save it first, of course. And then you can type in titles one by one, add them that way, or you can use one of our bulk add op options to quickly create lists. Once you have a list, let's take a, my, a look at my reader's theater list here that we just made, you can share that list as well. So in addition to being able to share resources or awards or lists you find on teaching books, you can also share the ones that you create yourself. Here's your share option with the bookmarks and you also have the option to embed, which is a nice visual way to add it to your digital spaces. All right, now I want to head over to another section for educators up on the top right here. This is another place that you could come to explore, dive deeper into some of the things we've looked at today, such as book promotion, um, library programming. If you're looking for th ways to market resources and, and, and promote books and things, those are going to be great. Two areas I want to point out uh, today are this first box right here. Literacy and Standards Connections. This is where you'll find our early childhood. We've been working really hard on adding a whole bunch of early childhood resources. So not only do we have those filters that we've looked at, but we also have different collections of concept books, early reader, and printables. So if you are looking for ready to go printables that reinforce these different phonics and phonological awareness elements, we have those for you. And we will be adding more uh, later this year. We go back to our Literacy and Standards Connections pages. This is also where you'll find all of our multi-leveled lessons and our Standards Connections, which are great pages to explore if you're thinking about uh, literacy resources that can be used across the curriculum. These pages will give you some um, excellent ideas using teaching books resources that connect and align with these standards. All right, back on my four educators page here. This is right up top here. The last section I wanna show you is teaching ideas. It's one of my favorite sections. The first area on this page is our timely topics. This is a great place to come if you're looking for timely um, resources that are related to what's happening that month. So for example, uh, Hispanic Heritage Month starts in just a few days. So we have a page here ready to go. It can give you some ideas, some uh, lists to explore, some here's some complete video readings that you can share, and then some actual activities that you can try out using teaching books resources. You don't need the book for these. You can just um, try it out here. You can also explore other ones that we have. You can even take a look at our archive to see the kind of thing we feature. And they're great for planning or for saving time. You know, maybe tomorrow's Earth Day, but you forgot about it. And now you need something to do um, related to Earth Day. You could come here and find some ideas that you can quickly implement and share with your students. 
back on your teaching ideas page, two areas I just want to point out, um, or one actually is just this ready to use ideas. So we have a whole bunch of um, ready to use lessons and activities that you could use here. We have little bell ringers, one a day activities. Um, all you need for these activities is teaching books. That's it. So it's a great time saver. And there's plenty to explore there for you. And lastly, help. Help and support is always available. You can contact us through the website on our contact us button right here. You can also just reach out to me directly at jvalenswilla at overdrive.com. I'm going to stop the recording, but I'll stick around and answer any questions. Thank you all for being here.